A coalition of Syrian rebel groups, Hayat Tahrir al-Sham, has taken full control of Syria's northwestern province of Idlib. Now, according to the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, the group consolidated their grip after fighters from a rival group, Ahrar al-Sham, completely withdrew from the city. The withdrawal came after a ceasefire deal was reached between the two groups, ending a week of fierce fighting. Well, for more on this, TRT World's editor-at-large, Ahmed al barai joins me now in the studio. Ahmed, thank you very much for coming on. Now, uh, when you look at the rebel composition in northern Syria, it's extremely complicated. If you could just break this down for us, what's happening in, in Idlib province? Who's in who? In Idlib, we have two predominant rebel groups that have been relocated from a Aleppo after the last war in Aleppo. The first one is the Hayat Tahrir al-Sham, which is known, previously known as a Jabhat al-Nusra or al-Nusra Front, and you have Ahrar al-Sham. Now, these two groups, by the way, the head of the Hayat Tahrir al-Sham used to be the head of a Ahrar al-Sham. So these two jihadist groups, they're there, they're fighting each other now because mainly they're trying Hayat Tahir Sham from the one hand they believe that the Asitana talk the whole political process doesn't make any sense we need to go on with our jihad against the Russians and their proxies the Iranians and the regime in, on the ground while Hayat Tahrir why Ahrar Sham believes that it's good to go for the uh, Geneva process the uh, Asitana talks and that's the way we should end this conflict that's why you should you, you can't find these kind of clashes between both groups. What's the significance of Idlib province in the general picture? From a strategic standpoint for the regime and Russia, Idlib is a very essential point simply because it overlooks Latakia. In Latakia, you have on the coast, you have the Ahmihim uh, air base, the Russian air base, the permanent Russian air base, the facilities where they carry out all their operations against the uh, rebel uh, groups. Uh, that's from the one hand. From the other hand, you have uh, Idlib as a lone pad against the the regime forces everywhere and from the other hand all the groups all the rebels um, the uh, who have been relocated from Aleppo are now amassing in that city so it's it doesn't make any sense that the the uh, the regime and its allies will give them the space and the room to uh, retake their breath they're going to attack them by a way or another and the problem is the Hayat Tahrir al-Sham doesn't agree with the, what we know now as the de-escalation zones. So uh, eventually, they either choose to uh, be part of the process, the negotiation process, and they accept the de-escalation uh, zones that have been agreed recently between Trump and Putin. Turkey is also involved in the process and would be highly interested in having a de-escalation zone. Otherwise, we're going to see the case scenario of Aleppo happening again there. Talking about these de-escalation zones that was set up in the Astana talks, uh, in this latest round in Astana, Turkey and Russia had agreed to send in their personnel, their military personnel, into Idlib province. Is this because of the de-escalation uh, zone uh, idea, or is it to maybe, will they be sort of helping to, to reduce the tension between Ahrar al-Sham and uh, Tahrir al-Sham? Recently, Tahrar al-Sham has have been raising the, the flags of the revolution, which is something that angered Hayat Tahrir al-Sham, who believed that we should be fighting the regime all the way and we should have one flag, which is the Jabhat al-Nusra flag. So the, the rebels in Ahrar al-Sham, they believe that let's, let's have some more talks. So if we go uh, closer to Turkey, if we go closer to the uh, peace talks, we could find a way out, while the other group believes no way we, we should go in this. So what, what's happening, there is a kind of agreement between the Russians and the Turks when it comes to these groups. Maybe Turkey is going to use its leverage to, um, that's why they, you have the withdrawal from Ahrar sham now. But the problem, does Turkey have the leverage to practice more pressure on Hayat Tahrir sham I, I doubt this. That's why we could find eventually that the, the troops, their reports speaking about Turkish troops in Kilis, 
opposite to uh, Afri to uh, Azaz and along with Afrin. These troops could have two missions. Maybe we're going to uh, see an eminent Euphrates sword, not a Euphrates shield. It's more offensive. These troops could go in in order to either first a fight Hayat Tahrir al-Sham, we could find this eventually with the coalition, with the uh, green light from the Russians, or this may be, and on the other hand, to do this, you're, you, Turkey is going to take Afrin. So it's two birds with one uh, stone. And President Erdogan had said that we're only pausing Operation Euphrates Shield so we could actually see um, sort of uh, the unpausing there too. Ahmed Albright, TRT World Editor at Large, thank you very much. Thank you.